radio show, and he was asked if he would still take RG3 over Andrew Luck. It's been a hot topic for many sports analysts since the Luck Griffin draft. However, Tony Dungy didn't hesitate. I thought RG3 had a chance to be something very, very special with the same type of leadership, same type of arm, but that just amazing athletic ability. Now, after two knee injuries or a knee and an ankle, you know, not the stunning athlete anymore. And Andrew has just gotten better and better. And, and he is, believe me, he's going to be the next great quarterback in this league. Canton, here we come, Skip Bayless. Uh, do you agree with Tony Dungy? Carrie, Stephen A., when I read this quote last night, I must admit I winced because I knew it was the truth and the truth hurt. Obviously, I plunged before that draft, and I said Robert Griffin III would wind up being better than Andrew Luck. And during their rookie seasons, RG3 was better than Andrew Luck because he won Rookie of the Year. And yet, I must admit, I haven't seen that RG3 since that ill-fated home playoff game in which the Redskins jumped up 14 to nothing on the Seattle Seahawks, thanks in large part to RG3's legs and arm. And that was the end of it. The rest is pretty much history, and I fear, I fear that, that Robert Griffin will be history because, Stephen A., I often refer to the eye test, and my eyes keep telling me he isn't the same, and I fear he'll never be the same. It, it now looks like to me that Superman is playing with a sliver of kryptonite in each of his superhero socks that he wears. And it's dragging him down because he's not that stunning athlete that we all knew and some of us loved. And I cannot tell a lie. Coach Dungy, Stephen A., is dead on correct. No, that was tough for you, Skip Bayless. Sorry it had to come to that. But I did tell you <laughs> before the draft that Andrew Luck should be the number one overall pick. And I even said to you that RG3 has an upside, a greater upside, arguably, at the time. But my issue with RG3 wasn't just about skill. It was primarily about durability. He's obviously an intellectual. RG3 knows the Washington Redskins offense inside and out. He knows what he's doing. The indecisiveness, or whatever you want to call it, the hesitancy, the reluctance, is because of comfort in the pocket. And it's because he knows that physically he's limited compared to what he used to be. And that's what this comes down to. When you know that you are not what you were supposed to be and what you once were, health-wise, it has a profound effect and has a profound impact. And when you talk about durability in the sport of football, take a look at RG3's legs and then look at Andrew Luck's legs. Mm. The dude, is the, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. Andrew Luck can run with the football, but he's comfortable in the pocket. He's comfortable as a signal caller. Signal caller. He's comfortable with the requisite skills it requires to be an elite quarterback on the NFL level. He's not somebody that has electrifying skills that has to develop those fundamentals. He has those fundamentals. He's developing into a superstar. That's the difference. And this is what Andrew Luck has and what RG3 does not. And as a result of it, when you t when you couple that skip with the fact that RG3, and I'm not knocking him for this, we understand that when you're an NFL player, there's a short window of opportunity for you to make, to maximize the opportunities available to you, and you want to make sure you position yourself to get paid, to get recognition, to build your brand, etc. But there is something to be said about the fact that Andrew Luck isn't concerned about any of that. You know why? Because he's a football player, and the primary reason he's cool with just being a football player is that he knows he's going to be a great one. And he expects and anticipates being around for the long haul as opposed to having the attitude, I've got to make the most of my opportunities right now because who knows when it's going to come to an end. Neither is wrong for having their respective attitudes, but it's clear what works for a, court, for a quarterback in the NFL. And it apparently works Luck's way 
instead of RG3s. And it's just that simple. You know, I tried to be humble when I started this topic. <laughs> I tried to eat a little crow and be a little bit painfully honest here. And then you tried to just shame me and uh -oh. you've ticked me off uh -oh. now. And I'm coming back at you with both barrels now. Let's start off with the fact that you have once again fallen into the trap that infuriates me. You are prematurely coronating Andrew Luck. I'm sorry, I haven't seen it yet. You even said the other night off the Monday night game, you give him only a B, I gave him a C plus. I'm not sold as, as sold as Coach Dungy seems to be about he's the next great quarterback. He threw seven interceptions in two playoff games last year. That's number one. Now, let's go back to RG3. Am I supposed to sit there as I watched him game after game at Baylor and say, oh, the NFL's going to break him in two. He's too slender. He's too fragile. He had a knee injury when he was a sophomore at Baylor. Baloney! They all have injuries in college. I'm not going to swallow that from you. And I have a question for you. Oh, mystic guru that you are as you predict NFL drafts. <laughs> Question, who's the greatest quarterback ever? Is it not Joe Montana? Would you, would you give me that? Joe Montana, greatest yes. quarterback ever? Okay, yep. compare the body of Joe Montana, the physique of Joe Montana as he came out of Notre Dame with the physique of one RG3 as he came out of Baylor. They're the same guy. They're, they're, they're built exact. They're long and slender. Joe Montana, slender dude ballet dancer in the pocket and listen in his first three years he could run a little bit he couldn't run like rg3 but he could flat out run so tell me how joe montana survived there's a lot of luck involved here so to speak andrew but in my case i could not predict that rg3 was going to get hurt as badly as he got hurt at the end of his rookie year and he never bounced back he had some psychological and emotional issues that we talked and talked about as i thought he got a little too full of himself as the leader of the Washington Redskins in Washington, D.C. But don't, don't tell me that you saw it coming that he couldn't last in the NFL. Well, I'm not saying that he can't last. I think RG3 can still last, and I think that he can end up having a productive career. I just don't think he'll ever be as good as Andrew Luck. That's number one. Number two, there's a difference, Skip Bayless, between being an athletic runner who plays quarterback and a quarterback who happens to know how to run. That would have been Joe Montana. Joe Montana wasn't a speedster. He wasn't the greatest athlete in the world. But like you said, he could dance in a pocket. Not tap know. dance, but dance in a pocket. But dance in a pocket, not to mention the fact that he was never one that was presumably going to go about the business of endangering himself by running the football the way that RG3 does. Number three, you also have to consider this, Skip Bayless. Andrew Luck, I'm going to say this again. Yes. First year, got the numbers right in front of me, completed just 54% of his passes, 23 touchdowns, 18 interceptions, when RG3 won Rookie of the Year. Year two, completion percentage goes up by six from 54 to 60. Touchdowns stay the same, cuts the interceptions in half. This year, up to 63.6%, 26 touchdowns, nine interceptions. I'm simply saying with Andrew Luck, who, by the way, was the successor to Peyton Manning, who was RG3 the successor to? Don't get me started with that. They didn't have a quarterback in Washington. You in Indianapolis, you're succeeding Peyton Manning. Regardless of the fact that it was supposed to be a rebuilding year, etc., we all knew the standards that were going to be applied to Andrew Luck coming out of Stanford, being the number one overall pick, the successor to Peyton Manning, which also facilitated Peyton Manning being let go by Jim Irsay and the Indianapolis coach so he could ultimately move on to Denver. Considering all of that, two consecutive 11 and 5 finishes and postseason berths. Andrew Luck can ball, and you just need to show him the respect he deserves. I understand the seven interceptions. I understand what you're talking about. You can bring up lows, I can bring up highs. But in the end, his body of work combined with aficionados inside and outside of the NFL, talking about the NFL, all tell the same story. The dude is big time, he's young, but he's coming, and the expectations are legit because he has earned it. That is Andrew Luck. You cannot deny that. Okay, I agree he is coming, 
but he is a long, long way from there, in my view. And I just get a little tired of people saying, oh, he's a cinch Hall of Famer. I don't well, know that. I need to see a whole lot more from Andrew Luck yeah, in but, the postseason. And go but ahead. here's where you're wrong. You're, you're, I believe you're measuring him against the Peyton Mannings, against the Tom Brady's, against a Drew Brees or an Andrew Luck. Those are the elite crop of you the are. NFL. Take away those guys. And who does not Andrew Luck compare to? Andrew Luck is, is – is, there, are, there are 32 teams in the NFL. Andrew Luck is easily top seven. Easily top seven. And he's in his third year in the league. What's the problem? I don't understand. Okay. It, 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 you can okay. go to Hall of Fame or whatever you want to. The brother can play. And if the other brother in Washington, D.C. had stayed healthy, I think we would not be having this conversation because I think the conversation would be focused on how great RG3 is and how he's a cinch Hall of Famer. No, they would be talking about RG3 and comparing him to Andrew Luck. We'd be having conversations comparing the two. It's just that RG3 arguably could be on the upside of that argument instead of the downside right now. But Andrew Luck still would have been conversed about because he is big time as a young quarterback, a third-year quarterback in the NFL, Andrew Luck, can ball. Okay. Just because RG3 would have been better doesn't mean he can't ball. Okay, uh, Carrie, last, yeah. last Let's quick wrap point. Let's it up. Go last ahead. Last quick point. Yeah. Are you telling me then you're convinced even now that Indy made the right choice in easing Peyton Manning out the back door to get yes. Andrew Luck and to give him the reins? Yes. Well, I, I don't. 15 because years, I would 15 much to 20 rather, years instead of had, five. Oh, come on. They would have had a much better shot at winning Super Bowls the last three years with Peyton Manning. And I think in the heart of hearts of every Colts fan, they know I'm right about that. All right. So, Stephen, A., no, let me don't. just uh, make sure I'm clear about that. Skip said he tried to start the argument using the words humble and you tried to shame him. Is that correct? He tried to be humble. Did he you see that? Say I tried to all I, try, all I tried to do was point out facts because we know that Skip Bayless ignores them when he wants to make an argument. He only picks the facts he wants to pick. He ignores the rest. <laughs> Skip. Next topic. <laughs> he doesn't believe you. Gentlemen, we're going to leave it here. We